So Safaricom has just released a new 4G Wi-Fi router and it's lightweight, portable and faster than their previous 4G routers. What's even more interesting is that this new version is cheaper, retailing at just 2,250 shillings and it comes with 30 GB of free data. In this video, I'll be giving you an in-depth review of the new router and letting you know whether this device is the right fit for your internet needs. Now when it comes to reliable and flexible internet access, Kenya is one of those countries in Africa that is at the top. In Kenya, the internet options that are available are so many, ranging from fixed line broadband from providers like Zuku, Fiber, Safaricom and Liquid Telecom, as well as 4G and 5G mobile broadband from Safaricom and Airtel, and satellite internet from services like Starlink. The options are so many and this is good news for the consumer. One space that has been very interesting over the past year is the mobile broadband space, where we've seen a lot of competition between Airtel and Safaricom. The rivalry has been so fierce that both telcos have reduced the prices of their 4G and 5G routers more than three times in the last year alone. Recently, Airtel lowered the cost of its 5G router, offering it for free with the purchase of any plan. In response, Safaricom has now reduced the prices of their 4G router to 2,250 shillings and their 5G router to 3,000 Kenya shillings. A few weeks ago, I went to a Safaricom shop and got the 4G router so that I can test it out for you. Before I go on, please subscribe to this channel to support me in making more videos like this so that you're always informed before you make such purchases. As I've mentioned, this router is now 2,250 Kenya shillings and there are two ways to purchase it. You can either go to a Safaricom shop or you can buy it online through Safaricom's e-commerce platform, Masoko. The new 4G router the Safaricom is selling is the Huawei CPE 5S. Previously, Safaricom was selling the Huawei CPE 3 and the Adrian router, but I'm told that those have now been phased out. Inside the box, you'll get the Safaricom 4G router in white and a power adapter which is also white in color. I'm actually glad that the power adapter is white because there are some routers which come with black adapters which don't match the color of the router. You'll also get an Ethernet cable and a quick start guide with instructions on how to set up the router. Finally, the router also comes with a Safaricom SIM card and on the package, there is a QR code that can be scanned to register the SIM card. Once you scan the QR code and register the SIM card, you'll receive the free 30GB which should last for one week. For some reason, my SIM card refused to register using the QR code, but I called Safaricom customer care and the issue was resolved and my SIM card was registered successfully. Now let's talk a bit about the design of this new router. Compared to the previous 4G routers that Safaricom had been selling, this device is more compact and lightweight. In terms of dimensions, the router is slightly shorter than your phone with a height and width of 125mm and a depth of 54.2mm when the stand is attached and 24.5mm without it. In front of the device, you'll see the Huawei logo together with a network status indicator, a Wi-Fi indicator and a signal indicator showing how strong the 4G signal is. Below the router, you'll find the SIM card slot as well as the Wi-Fi name, password and a QR code that you can also use to connect to the Wi-Fi. Behind the router, you'll see the power port, a LAN port that you can use to connect the Ethernet cable to your computer, a reset button and a WPS button. In terms of hardware, this device is equipped with built-in 4G antennas, meaning that it will use the same 4G network as your phone. The only difference between this and your phone is that it may have a stronger antenna gain, hence making it more suitable for use as a dedicated internet device. Also, it has the option to connect an external antenna that can be particularly valuable for users situated in areas where there is poor 4G signal reception. The 4G on this device supports maximum theoretical download speeds of 195 Mbps and maximum theoretical upload speeds of 105 Mbps, but we'll see the actual speeds when we get to the speed test. The Wi-Fi on this device relies on a single band 2.4 GHz network and it's capable of supporting up to 32 devices. While this might be okay for many users, I feel like this is the router's main weakness because in this day and age, all routers need to at least support the 5GHz spectrum, which is more stable and less congested. 
The good thing is that this router also comes with an Ethernet cable and an Ethernet port which supports speeds up to 100 Mbps just in case you don't want to use the Wi-Fi. Now, one of the reasons why I like portable routers like this is that they have a very low power consumption. The good thing about this new 4G router is that it's rated at less than 12 watts and that means that it uses very little energy. The router is powered by an AC to DC adapter with an input range of 100 to 240 volts and an output of 12 volts. Since this device uses 12 volts, you can easily power it with a power bank or with the USB port in your car with a USB to 12 volt cable like this. This cable is easy to find from AliExpress or in electronic shops. With this cable and a power bank, you can easily use this 4G router outdoors in places where there is no AC power. Now let's talk about the router's network and wireless capabilities. As I'd mentioned before, the new Safaricom 4G router supports theoretical maximum download speeds of 195 Mbps and upload speeds of 105 Mbps. It is very important to recognize that these figures represent ideal conditions and the actual speeds that you'll experience will fluctuate based on so many factors including network congestion and the strength of the 4G signal where you live. I tested the router in two different areas, that is an urban area where you are likely to get strong 4G reception and a remote area where you are likely to be farther away from a cell tower. In my remote test, which I did in my rural home, I got a maximum download speed of around 18 Mbps and a maximum upload speed of 7 Mbps. In Nairobi, I tested the router at different times of the day to see how it performs during peak hours when network load is high and during off-peak hours when less people might be using the network. Here, the router delivered maximum download speeds of around 45 Mbps and maximum upload speeds of 50 Mbps. Many people who buy this router are going to use it for everyday tasks like browsing, watching YouTube, Netflix and taking Zoom calls, so these speeds will be more than enough. Now let's talk about packages for a bit. There are no unlimited plans that are available for this 4G router. The only plans that are available are bundles, meaning that you'll be able to connect to the internet until your data bundle is exhausted. Honestly, I think that the bundles all the way to the 140GB bundle makes sense, but they begin to become a bit controversial, especially once you go past the 180GB bundle, which is 4,100 shillings. This is because at that price, you'd rather get the 5G router, where for 4,000 shillings, you'll get an unlimited 50 Mbps package of 400GB of data at 3,499 shillings. Anyway, let me know what you think about the packages. Having said all that, who is this device for? I think the primary target audience for this 4G router would first be people and small businesses that live or operate in regions where there is no access to a fiber network or the fiber in that area is very unreliable. Additionally, the router's compact form factor makes it suitable for users requiring internet access on the go, for example for camping, for exhibitions and such similar uses. It's also a good device to buy for temporary internet use, for example, to use only for a few days when you travel up country. In summary, I like that the new Safaricom 4G router is compact and portable and this is beneficial for users needing internet in various locations. I also like that this router is very easy to use, requiring minimal setup which is just inserting the SIM card and powering it on. The ability to purchase it online and activate the line via the QR code is also convenient and the reduced price makes it accessible for more Kenyans. However, the lack of 5GHz support is the router's major downside as it operates on the 2.4GHz band which is more prone to interference and may limit your internet speeds. For those seeking faster speeds and living in 5G covered areas, I would recommend the Safaricom 5G router which I've reviewed in detail and I'll include a link at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching this video and please like and subscribe to support this channel. See you in the next video.